Konnichiwa Mina, boku wa Jeremy desu, yoroshiku o nagai shimasu. And today is Saturday, early Saturday morning, and it is, of course, Sailor Moon Crystal Day. Today we watched Infiltration Sailor Mars, which is Act 15. And I will say right off the bat that Toei did not drop the ball, which is good because they actually had new opening animation, sort of. They're doing... They're doing something that's kind of irritating, but at the same time, okay, it's not a big deal. Obviously, they're trying to save money on animation stuff, as we kind of already knew by the lackluster animation here and there, and how things never really correlate properly in a lot of ways. However, this episode wasn't too, too bad, but some things stand out a lot more than others. Uh, the opening sequence was almost exactly the same as before, except instead of the Queen Barrel and the Shiteno, you have the Black Moon family, which I figured would happen, and <coughs> bits of Chibiusa and Sailor Pluto, so I'm glad they threw those in there. Um, mostly the second half of the, of the opening is different, but still, pretty good. The ending theme, on the other hand, is... it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, when I watched it this time, I went back and compared it with uh, the last episode, and I don't know why, but it just seems like it's a slight bit, uh, like, just ever so slightly different, but I could be completely wrong with that. Um, okay, let's go through it. Most of the first half of the episode was felt incredibly rushed. It really did. Like, I went back and I read the chapter, as I usually do before I watch the episodes, and um, it just felt really, really rushed. And I'm thinking, okay, so maybe they're changing something. I'm fully expecting something like they did with the Shiteno, where they don't actually die... Um, whereas Koan is supposed to die in this in this chapter and so on and so forth as we go along and each of the Sailor Senshi is taken and blah blah blah. Um, that actually stayed pretty true. Uh, I'm not that surprised though because when you watch the musical too, um, the, the sisters weren't even in it. It mainly focused on the Black Moon family and really that's what the original manga chapters do too. When we get to Super S, if they make it that far, it'll be the same thing for Cat's Eye, Hawk's Eye, and... Why did I say Cat's Eye? Tiger's Eye, Hawk's Eye, and Fish Eye. Because um, they're kind of just... dispensable, I guess, is the word. Which really sucks, because I like them. Anyway, so moving back into this, it is pretty much scene for scene, aside from the fact that um, there's just tiny little differences. Like, they don't have Motoki's sister in this, and she's a waitress at the Fruits Parlor Crown. Um, they have, what's his name? The guy that looks up to Mamoru. Uh, his name is, what is it? A Sanuma chan and he seems a lot smaller than he does in the manga but then again you don't really have much size comparison there he sounds very young too but I guess it kind of makes sense because he is a junior um, it's just he just seems disproportioned again maybe they're trying to purposely show the the young compared to Mamoru who early on after Chibiusa runs away and he's kind of looking over Usagi to make sure she's okay his shoulders are incredibly big, and his head is kind of weird. I don't know. To me, it's just, again, they, they keep drawing the guys really weird. Uh, Rubius looks a lot more muscular than he did in the original anime series, which is fine, too. Um, Saphir looks really young, too, so uh, I don't know. Miyano Mamoru is the voice of Prince Demand, which is pretty neat. And what I think is interesting, I was just thinking about this, too, when Rubius... Rubius, yeah. Um... When he was talking, just as he took Sailor Mars at the end, he his voice, his Japanese voice, reminds me of his English voice when Deke and Cloverway, or not Cloverway, when Deke did it. Um, it's so weird, it's just, I'm like, God, that sounds funny, because it sounds the same. And that was how many years ago? Like, the, the 90s? Like, I know, I know I'm dating myself by saying that, but really, it does. Think about it. Listen to them. Um, I bet if you were to compare the two, if you have the English and the Japanese, it's, it's not that dissimilar. So, that to me was interesting. Brilliant casting, and I'm sure they didn't even think about doing that. So, anyways, it's exciting to me. Um, the Senshi got their new pens, of course, but even before that, like, it seemed really rushed when Chibiusa did the whole hypnosis thing on Ikoku, Ikuko Mama and Kenji Papa and uh, Sh Sh Shingo. Um, I almost said Shiteno. 
I can't talk. <laughs> but, uh, and of course, they're really accepting of her. I thought it was hilarious, actually, and kind of dumb, but really funny when they're sitting there, they're like, uh, like, you know, they're being taken in by the hypnosis thing. And, you know, Usagi's reactions to Chibiusa reflect exactly what I think, and I think she speaks for the audience, for some of the audience members. Chibiusa has always pissed me off. I have no idea why. She just pisses me right the hell off. Probably because I've always liked Usagi, and I can kind of feel her sort of way of being there. But at the same time, it's just uh, aggravating. I would be aggravated if I was in the same situation. Seriously. Like, some little bitch comes in and does that. It's like, no, 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 no. Anyways, so... We go through it, um, they don't introduce Koan right away in terms of to Rei, like they do in the manga here, where, where they're doing the, uh, the club setups and stuff and they kind of meet early on. Uh, another thing that was interesting was the name of the president, and I know it's in the manga too, I never really put two and two together, but Kotono, which is the same last name as Kotono Mitsuishi, who does the voice of Sailor Moon, I thought that was kind of funny, little, I don't know if that's, you know, I'm, homage to her it could be but still it's it's neat and when Ray had the dream of Koan and the droids and Koan setting fire to the person it was a little girl in the manga uh, here look Let's see if you guys can see that um, it's a little girl but in the crystal episode we saw it was a guy so that was an interesting change that they did there um, maybe because it would have been considered too graphic uh, in Japan for that, which is really saying a lot, considering there's a lot more graphic things out there. But then again, Sailor Moon has the fandom of younger kids as well as adults and stuff, so they're just trying to keep it somewhat family-friendly, I guess, as much as they can. Um, Luna was especially cute in this episode, especially when... It was around the, the breakfast table, Usagi's eating, and Chibi's eating, and then Luna offered milk, and, but just the way she had her paws on the table, and it just, her, it was really cute, I will say. That was the, one of the first times I thought, wow, she's actually really good. But no, Luna is, is actually well performed in this one. I, I really like how they're doing her. Um, still very little of Artemis, like, it's like he doesn't basically exist. He's got a very, very little role, which hopefully when, by the time they get to Super S and they if they do show the human um, Luna and Artemis and Diana like they do in the manga, that'd be kind of neat. Because we've never had human Artemis before. We've had human Luna, and that was a nice little surprise with uh, the, our, the Dark Kingdom arc when Luna was a human, very briefly. So, um, they do the, the premonitions and stuff. They, there's the part where Rey's running to go and um, talk to the sisters, and... Actually, she's not in her Miku costume at all, Miko costume at all, really, which is very strange to me. Um, she's in her schoolgirl uniform, but in the anime, in Crystal, they had her in her Miko thing, which makes sense because she's a priestess, you know, kind of plays with it. Um, so that was different. And when they ran into the the sisters, not not the Ayakashi sisters, but I mean like the the school, the sisters. It was Ray that ran into them. Okay, um, where is it here? Uh, where is it? I know it's in here somewhere, but yeah. Basically, Ray runs into the sister there, but in Crystal, it was Chibusa that did, and she fell down, and Ray didn't actually know who she was yet, but she still helped her. Um, so, that was another interesting change, too, I guess, just to give Chibusa more of a role um, in it. To, I suppose. So they're going, they're going fast and going fast, and, and I'm like, okay, they're gonna do something different here. And then I realized, when it was time for the transformation sequence, they had to do a million years of transformation because it's the first time they transformed with their star sticks. However, just like Sailor Moon's transformation, it wasn't incredibly different. Um, there were, it seemed like there were little bits that were slightly different, but nothing over the top. I mean, the beginning parts, yes, because it's more dazzle and sparkle and, and glitter and stuff, which is fine. But it would have been nice to have a slight little more difference to the transformations, especially Sailor Moon's, because she is the main character. Um, when the Moonrod was born, that was very, very well done, too. Uh, very reminiscent of how they did it in, in the Sailor Moon S anime originally. 
uh, with the heart or the spiral moon rod, and uh, you know the love of Usagi and Mamoru created it. And it's also really nice not to have that whole arc where they're not talking to each other. They because Mamoru is trying to protect her and blah blah blah. But I do kind of miss the Doom Tree, <laughs> I must say. But that's okay because it's in the other series as, as well. Or, of course. Uh, after that, not much has really changed at all, aside from the fact that when the Moonrod is created, you don't see Prince Demand and Rubius like you do in this particular frame over here. Um, and they're seen later on when, uh, well, Sailor Moon, of course, beats Koan really easily. Uh, in here, she says, I know how to use it, but what should I shout out? But on the anime, she's like, I know what to say, and then she says it. And for the briefest moment, she does a quick little uh, power scene. The original anime was very indicative of having the long drawn out powers, like the tr the things how they do the powers and stuff, which I think a lot of people really liked and miss about this one. But at the same time, it's it's kind of more believable because of the action and all that stuff. So you kind of sacrifice one for the other, I guess, and it, it kind of works. But I really wish the transformations, since they were kept so long, would be just slightly different. Again, though, stock footage, just making small uh, edits, not changing too much partially because they don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Hopefully now that it's going to be seen on television they'll add some more money into it and by the time they reach the Infinity Arc, Super S, and Stars, hopefully it'll be a lot more constant and much more like just stable, I, I guess. Um, so yeah, everything else pretty much played out exactly the same. Rubius came down, uh, Sailor Mars's fire thing was impenetrable, Mercury even tried her uh, Shine Aqua Illusion, that didn't work. Uh, we saw Venus's Love Me Chain, um, and so on and so forth, and Rubius picked up Mars on Prince Demand's orders to take her back um, to uh, Nemesis. There we go, their star, which they have not named Nemesis yet, but it is Nemesis. And Wise Man sounds, sounded young at first, like too young, almost compared to even Prince Demand at first. But then after he started talking more, I'm like, oh, okay, I could, I could see it now. Overall, not a bad episode. It was pretty close to following almost exactly with some minor little weird changes here and there. Again, one glaring one to me is that Motoki's sister, which her name escapes me, and I'm sure it's actually probably literally right staring me in the face. Um, I should know it. I should know it. Uh, Unazaki kun or Chan. There we go. Unazaki Furuhata. Um, she wasn't in it. That's so weird. Unless I blink, it was like a blink and you miss it thing. Maybe I was looking down at the book because I kind of do that from time to time, but I don't remember seeing her at all. So it's interesting that Mamoru's or that the guy from Mamoru's school is in it too. I don't know. I don't know. He reminds me of Kaito Ace a little bit from uh, Sailor V, too. So, weird. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But. So we'll see what happens. Mercury, of course, is up next in two weeks. So it'll be her turn to, to disappear. And it even says abduction Sailor Mercury, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, overall, I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to the next one, as always. So... Leave comments below if you'd like. I'd like to hear your opinions and stuff as well. As always, if I miss something, please point it out. You usually do, so <laughs> it's good. Um, and I appreciate chatting with other Sailor Moon fans. And Josh, Josh Tech Soldier, I know you said you're going to do a video, so I'll be looking forward to that and everyone else as well. Also, Zach. I wanted to make a special uh, um, shout-out to my buddy, Zach. Uh, congratulations, man, on getting a teaching job. That is fantastic. Very, very excited for you on that. I wanted to be a teacher a long time ago, but I have the worst memory ever, and I forget everybody's names. So. But congratulations. That's great, and I really know that you're going to do well. Um, even though I've never met you in person, I can tell by your personality and just watching your videos and stuff that you're going to be great at what you do, so just take it in stride. And you're a fellow Sailor Moon fan. How can you go wrong with that, right? We Sailor Moon male fans need to stick together because there's not that much of us as far as I know. But it's always nice to meet other... And, you know, I just love meeting other fans and stuff. So, arigatou gozaimashita for watching. And also, don't forget to check out my radio show, which is on Sunday. So tomorrow and every Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 92.5 FM, www.dx.ca, Japanese music at its best. And I will see you guys next time. Jimatane mina. We'll see you later.